Canada's far north, one of the last true wilderness destinations in the world. Part of the Arctic includes the region known as Nunavik, which is the northern part of Quebec. Nunavik means great land in the language of the native people, the Inuit. With over 171,000 square miles of pristine land, inhabited by more polar bears, muskox, and caribou than people, you can understand why it's called the Great Land. I have traveled to this magical place on the edge of Ungaba Bay to visit Inukshuk Lodge. Built of steel to withstand the forces of nature here in the Arctic, this lodge has a spectacular view looking out onto the bay. Even better, it has access to some spectacular Arctic char fishing. He's on it. Go! That was cool. These are char that average 12 pounds in size, with some going well over 20 pounds. Big one there. I got 20 pound test on here. In this saltwater environment, these fish are aggressive and super strong. A true test of an angler and their equipment. Got him. Got him. Got him. Nice job, Colin. Oh. Right at the side of the boat. Oh, just such strong fish. Gobba Bay char. Oh, you got, got him. him! Nice! That's a big one. Come join me on my adventure to Nunavik and one of the last best places on the planet. Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Nunavik Tourism Orvis Sporting Traditions Rio Products Superfly Fly Fishing Made Easy Our adventure begins in Montreal, where my cameraman Jeremy and I board the plane for the two and a half hour flight to Kujuak. We disembark in Kujuak to stay the night, which gives us an opportunity to look around. This small town of approximately 2800 is the transportation hub of Nunavik, and it is located on the Kokosok River, which flows into Ungaba Bay. First thing in the morning, we're back at Kujuak Airport for a short flight to the lodge. As we flew low over Ngaba Bay, we were amazed by the varying colors of the ocean and the land. We even spotted a pod of bright white beluga whales. After landing, we grabbed our gear jumped on ATVs and then settled into our accommodations. In every direction, the view was nothing short of spectacular. The lodge is owned and operated by Paul Ostegi. Paul is passionate about the region, its people, and the unspoiled wilderness. I bought Inukshuk Lodge because Ever since I was a child, I was always drawn to the, uh, the wilds of northern Canada. 
and it was an opportunity to have an Arctic char camp and also collaborate with the Inuit. There's an added bonus, an added experience of fishing in this part of the world. We have the giant George River about 10 miles that way. We have the Whale River about 25 miles that way, both great Atlantic salmon rivers. And every river within the next 20 miles of here has char runs and sea run brook trout, abundant sea run brook trout. So you can realistically expect to catch three species while they're feeding in salt water, Arctic char, Atlantic salmon, and brook trout. On our first trip out in search of char, Paul and Bert took us to some islands that were a few miles off the shoreline out in Ngaba Bay. Here the Arctic char would come in with the rising tide, hunting prey items. The char have not yet moved back towards the rivers and are busy feeding in Ngaba Bay. We cast out toward shore with sinking lines and slowly stripped in our flies. It didn't take long for us to connect with the first char. He's on it. Yeah, yeah, you've got it, you've got it. That was cool. Oh, look at this fish. This thing is just, oh, just a, pure power. Oh, they're so strong. Let me get them up, head up. There you go. There we go. Fish in the boat. Yes. Well done, yes. Colin. Well done. Thank you, sir. And that was so cool. Seeing that fly and him following. And I gave it a little pull and he poop. Oh, yes. Awesome. Oh, look at that. Is that not beautiful? Look at that, just whoosh, gone. That was cool. So very cool. Let's get another one. At the end of a very satisfying day, we headed home ready for a great meal. But on the boat ride home, you never know what you'll see. Minky whales, ring seals, polar bears, even cute little lemmings at the boat launch. The main forage of Arctic char, sea run trout, and even Atlantic salmon in Ngaba Bay is a combination of sea lance and shrimp. Sea lance are distributed throughout the world. Here in the Arctic, they form an important food source for seabirds, whales, and of course fish. Most of the char we spotted were chasing schools of lance, sometimes even driving them up to the surface. Arctic shrimp, referred to as northern prawn or Pandalus borealis, are a major food source for many creatures and fish in the Arctic. However, we use sparkly and full green woolly buggers with great success as well as Schultz's S3 sculpin, all of which resembled shrimp. Just below the surface, there were massive schools of lance all around our boat, which the char targeted as these hapless bait fish got pushed in towards shore as the tide came in. He's right there beside the boat. Got him! Yeah! <laughs> That's a good sized one too. So I spotted the fins. That's what I saw was the white fins moving. And he was going by a rock. Oh, it's a good sized one. Yeah. Oh! That's a char. That is a char. Yeah. That's a big fish. Okay, let's let this guy go. The Inuit of Nunavik are an extraordinary and exceptionally friendly people who have lived off the land for thousands of years. During my trip to Nunavik, I had the great pleasure of meeting an extraordinary Inuit by the name of Johnny May. Johnny is a hometown legend, a role model, and a hero. During his 50 plus years of flying a plane in Nunavik, he has made numerous rescues, deliveries, and medevacs often in horrendous weather conditions. He has saved lives and helped those in need. But that's not what Johnny is most well known for. Since 1965, every Christmas, Johnny has flown his plane low over Kujuwak to drop candy and presents to the children. What I do is uh, we get a lot of candy and, and we throw it out the door of the airplane there and people gather in a certain area around town. It's quite an event. So when I found out Johnny and his family had a summer camp near Anukshuk Lodge, I had to go meet the man with a huge heart for community and this land. Johnny took time to explain to me why the Arctic char are so special. You know, char 
you can eat several times a week, you never get tired of it. Salmon, it's much richer. One meal maybe a week, you've had enough of salmon, but char, it's, uh, you can just keep on eating it. And it's like you say, it's a great tasting fish, so. The next day, we enjoyed a wonderful breakfast, then headed out to catch the next rising tide. Here in Ngava Bay, the tide range is massive, up to 50 feet at certain times of the year. The char follow these tides and use them to corner prey like lance and shrimp. Go! Right yeah. there. Oh, it's, it's a big, big one. one too. Oh yeah, good fish. Two following mine too. Big fish. Big, big fish. Again, followed it right to the boat. And I did what I did what the guy told me to, and that was I gave it a little. Now they have shoulders? Yeah. Hey? yeah. And he's using that Look current. That. Wow. Oh, that's a big fish. Strong fish. Yeah. Oh, I saw it coming through the net clear? That's a, Yeah, you know what? You want me to get the net? I'll yeah. get the net. You can net if you get want. Get out of the. Yeah, he, he holds the boat. Large arbor reel, real important here. And good drag. Okay, if I can get his head up, Paul, I'm gonna try right now. Let's see if we get him up. I don't oh, feel that. Strong. They're just too strong. Hey, these fish have been feeding on lance for a month in the ocean. Boy. I saw that fish take, I knew it wasn't gonna be a two minute fight. The beast. Yeah. That was awesome. That was. Did you see it come and take the fly? Oh yeah. I love it. Love it. Never get tired. And of it. for one, for one, you know, usually the smaller one gets it. This time the bigger one got it. One, two, three, scoop. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big fish. Look at the look how fat he is. Look how fat he is. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Thanks. And off he goes. Just like that. Gone. Huh? <laughs> the flies we successfully used were quite diverse because we had to experiment a great deal to assess what the Arctic char were taking. We used long strip leeches in various colors to imitate the sea lance, but only had limited success. Usually the fish would only follow these flies to the boat, but not strike. The two top producing flies were totally discovered by a combination of luck and analytical reasoning. The first pattern was a large green woolly bugger with reflective chenille body probably a size one aught. The second fly pattern is known as Schultz's S3 Sculpin, which was created for smallmouth bass fishing in Michigan waters. We believe that both flies, when slowly twitched back to the boat, resembled Arctic shrimp with their silhouette and action, which is why the char were so aggressive on them. We had many fish take right at the side of the boat on these patterns. It was so much fun. Uh, the types of wildlife that you can expect to see visiting on Gava Bay are seals, whales, numerous types of uh, ocean seabirds, uh, occasionally belugas and occasionally polar bears. The Arctic char in Quebec get uh, larger uh, maybe than anywhere in the world. The genetics are here for large char. Uh, the Arctic char reach up to 30 pounds here and due to the fact that they're feeding so heavily in the ocean in such abundance, uh, their strength is second to none.
Lo va a fish. I see him. I see him. I see him. I see it. Big one there. Okay. Hang on. Don't move the boat. Got him. Got one. Double. Oh. It's not the big one, but it's still great. Ah. Awesome. Oh, look at the big one there, following around. See him? Oh, look at this. This is so awesome. On Gaba Bay, baby. Catching char. Look at that. Seeing polar bears and belugas and all types of great wildlife here. Double header. Oh. Busting oh, them on top. Up. I got 20 pound test on here. Eight weight rough, eight weight gear? Yeah. Or no, it's a nine weight. Just look at that. Savage. Absolutely uh, savage. Uh, come here. That beauty. Got his head up. Got his head up. There you go. Nice char. <laughs> nice. Nice fish. Oh. Come on top. Okay, I'll step back. You want to bring him in? Go ahead. He's a nice. This is a pretty looking. He's a nice shape. Look. Look at that. Oh, Look that's that. beautiful. Look at that fatty. Look. Oh wow. Wow. The equipment I brought for this adventure was all top quality in order to meet the physical demands of salt water and these strong fish. We used 9 foot for 9 weight rods with fast action tapers to help us cast full sinking and sink tip lines. To these rods we matched reels featuring quality drag systems for fighting the char. Like any salt water fishing, you need to have lots of backing. I had 200 yards of 50 pound test backing on each of my reels. The char were generally deep down in 10 to 15 feet of water cruising the rocky shoreline. So we used full sinking lines type 5 or 6 which typically sink at 5 to 6 inches per second. The other line which I preferred was a 24 foot sink tip in a type 6 sinking head. This line was easy to cast in the wind and got down quickly to depth. To our sinking lines, we attached six to eight feet of either 15 or 20 pound heavy mono leader. You don't need a tapered leader, just straight heavy mono or tippet material right to the fly. Good, got him. Got him. Got him. There you go. It's not a big fish, but it's one. No one is allowed to be bored, okay? Nope. Nobody's allowed to be bored in oh, Keep your eyes open. What a powerhouse. Yeah, so someone said so it's not that big a fish relative uh, to the other ones. Look at this guy. Oh, he's beautiful. Uh, and this is why 20 pounds of leader are critical. So you can put the muscle to these guys. That's all right, it's all right. I'll get him away from the motor. Other side, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna let them, I'm gonna reverse them now. Ready? There you go. Ha ha! Right on. This is so much fun. You're not bored yet? No. <laughs> Crystal clear. Good job, Colin. Oh. Wow, how exciting when you can see him come right to the top. I can't even tell you how exciting that was. <laughs> Holy mackerel. What a blast. Oh. What a blast. And I couldn't get him. He, he followed the fly three times. And I couldn't it, get him to take it. There's like six big ones together. Wow. 
Oh. Oh. Bring him back. Oh, nope, nope. He's not ready. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Such power. And this is not a giant. It's still, it's a good one, but wow, he's char is so strong. Oh. And to see that fish take it. Oh, he Your couldn't eyes. have been any more than just a couple of feet under the surface. Yeah. Just slowly he, following the fly and, and with Colin working the fly just a bit, enticed the fish. Bang. He's a fine, thick char. Oh, I mean, yeah. this Look is that. a nice char. This is beautiful. I'm putting the wood to him and he's coming in towards me. There he goes. Oh, you really absolutely have to have a large arbor reel. Get him up. Get him up. Heads up, heads up, heads up. Another foot, Colin. There you go. Wow. Whoa. Oh, good job, Colin. Oh, what a oh. nice char. That's a char. <laughs> right at the side of the boat. Twitch, twitch, twitch. Nunavik is a very special part of the Canadian North and some place every angler should aspire to visit. Far more than fishing, this magical land will capture your heart with its raw beauty and spectacular wildlife. Our thanks to Paul Ostegi for inviting us to Inukshuk Lodge. To learn more about this destination or others in our series, visit us online at thenewflyfisher.com. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. For videos like the one you just saw and more, subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss our weekly uploads of educational videos, exciting trips, and much more. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Nunavik Tourism. Orvis Sporting Traditions. Rio Products Superfly Fly Fishing Made Easy